If you've been alive and you've attempted some things in life, you'll be aware of what I'm talking about in this series where you attempt to do some things and you actually succeed in doing them. But then instead of feeling this fulfillment for a long period of time, there's this foreboding that just ashes you, just comes and just weighs down on you from nowhere, especially after attaining a high, after achieving something, after conquering something. This is what I've been calling the re-entry, and I'm going to explain that in these episodes even as we continue. And what can you be able to do every time you're experiencing a re-entry? We spoke about this in the podcast yesterday, that a visionary sometimes faces these ups and these downs in life, and they are given. How we handle them can be extremely critical. Let's see one way that this can be handled in this podcast today. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I got the word re-entry from space exploration. It is a situation where the spaceship or the space shuttle, it is coming back from space and it's re-entering the Earth's surface. It is where you meet reality because you've been in the space and you've been coasting around, there's no gravity. But now you're entering the Earth's surface where there is gravity and there is opposition and you've got to face it. The same thing happens with success and with the failure. In other words, you go out there and you try to do something and you actually do succeed in it. And the next thing that you're facing is that You're having this enthusiasm that is derived from the success that you got. You're having this semblance of fulfillment, this semblance of joy and happiness that came from the fulfillment, that came from the success that you got and the success that you rightfully achieved. But then it doesn't last. I don't know about you, but I've experienced that for quite a number of times. It doesn't last. In other words, you, your heart and your spirit is always looking for something else, something new, something bigger, something that can be lasting, some kind of lasting fulfillment. And that's how we've been organized. That's how we've been created as men and women. That's how we operate. It's in such a way that as long as we are not satisfying ourselves in terms of the things that were meant to be done, there's always to be going that fleeting happiness, that mirage kind of happiness. We're always going to have this moment moments of re-entry in life where there is an up and then there is a down. The down is the re-entry I'm talking about. How do you deal with the down moment after you've succeeded and after you've excelled in one thing or another? But you see, even if you are in purpose, let's just assume that you're doing these things because you are smack in the middle of the purpose that you were created to do. Still, you cannot be able to ex- escape re-entry. One time or another, one moment or another, you face the prospect of having this foreboding feeling of emptiness. Like, is that there? Is that all there is to life? I mean, I've just accomplished this, but I still feel empty. Or maybe you've been so charged with the success that you are doing. In fact, by the way, you are so up there. The adrenaline, adrenaline is moving. Picture a guy who is running for the marathon. I mean, in the Olympics, this man has been preparing for four good years, and now he's performing at. I mean, the adrenaline is charged and so on and so forth, and he breaks the record. That moment is a serious, serious high moment, all right? Very seriously high moment. And then that moment is not going to last. 
The next time he's going to be running an Olympics is four years. And if he's not careful, he's going to go back down where he's no longer competing, he's probably no longer preparing, and he's no longer charged, and so on and so forth. That's why, friends, these athletes, and I'm, I'm so glad I've used, been using that example, these athletes, by the way, they have a situation that they need to be treated for, especially footballers. Do you know footballers, they get out of their peak when they reach 30, 35, that's it. And 35 is a very young man. And now what is he going to be doing for the rest of his life? He comes into this moment of this mode of re-entry. If he's not planned himself well, and I'm going to talk about some of the things you can do, if you've not planned yourself well, you're going to face a very serious situation where you can even go to the exact opposite. You've been a productive human being, and now you can start destroying the things you've been building, the productivity you've been championing, the contribution, the impact you've been creating on the face of the earth because of the re-entry, because you did not know how to manage the re-entry. And friends, by the way, sometimes this re-entry comes late on in life in the terms of what I call retirement, what people call retirement. Someone has been working 60 plus years, 50 plus years all their life, like a, a teacher waking up in the, every, every morning, going to teach kids. I mean, that's all this guy knows. And then one day you tell him, go home. That is a re-entry. He doesn't have a clue of what he's going to be doing with his life. And the problem with re-entry, friends, is that you don't need to wait until you have retired 50 years, 55 years from today, or 55 years in service. No. Re-entry happens, friends, nearly on a daily basis, probably on a daily basis. Let me just say on an occasional basis to be on the safe side. It happens on an occasional basis. You've reached a high, you've done a project and the successful project has been launched and so on and so forth. And now you're back to surface. I mean, you on square zero. The project has been launched. I mean, there's no need for that exertion that you exerted yourself on. Again, there's no need for these things that you've been doing again. What do you do when the re-entry moments come? What do you do when you're faced with a situation where the project is delivered, the thing that you, the success is there, but it's temporary, it's not eternal, and now you have to face reality? What do you do? That's what I want us to discuss, start dis- discussing in these episodes. And today, we're going to deal with the very first thing that you can do in order to succeed managing your re-entry. One great visionary that I do admire a lot is called Apostle Paul. There's something he wrote, and it's very powerful. Few words, but are very, very extremely powerful that we can be able to apply. He said, this one thing that I do, I forget all that lies behind. He says, everything that has been on my gain, I count it as a loss. I forget it. I forget everything. I forget what lies behind, and I press on towards something else. I press ahead. I go forward towards something something else to I'm pursuing I'm always in constant pursuit and that is one of the secrets we can be able to use but today in the podcast I'm going to discuss one simple thing that is very powerful and it's, uh, basically everyone does this and I've even been able to discuss this in the previous series on something a totally different topic and it's simply this that you need to take a vacation now when I talk about vacation people normally talk about those 21 days that you take leave you know, at work and so on and so forth, and you go away and on and on and on and on. I'm talking about taking a break, resting from this exertion that you've been dedicating yourself to for a season of time until something is accomplished, probably writing a book. Once you've done that book and it's done, take some time off. I know this sounds weird, but take some time off, stop writing, go away on whatever vacation and free your mind and free your head, free your hands from writing and from all this exertion in the mind and the working and so on and deadlines and so on and so forth. Because once you do this, you're re-energizing yourself and you're actually mentally communicating to your body, mentally communicating to your brain and to your head that listen, we are not in the exertion mode anymore. We are back to reality. Things have changed. They normally say a change is as good as a rest or maybe a rest as good as a change. But they normally say that so that we can be able to reboot ourselves. I remember talking about rebooting ourselves in some episodes prior that we need to reboot ourselves. We need to mentally tell ourselves it's different. 
is not the same anymore. I mean, the the high octane charge that I was on is no longer the, the the thing. I mean, I am back to normal. I am back to reality. And so, what do you do? You slow down from the exertion so that you can reflect, refresh, reboot. You know, become a new and start picking up the speed slowly by slowly and gain momentum once again slowly by slowly until such a time that you peak again and you exert yourself in full speed and then you deliver something else and once you've delivered something else, again you take a break. This I would advise for just about anyone. I know it can be very rigid in organizations where we want people to go on leave only after they have eligible to go on leave. But I can tell you this. If you have a group of guys who have achieved a milestone, they have exerted themselves and they have achieved a milestone, maybe they have launched a project successfully and so on and so forth, give those guys a vacation. Otherwise, the re-entry that I'm talking about where you're coming back to reality, you're coming back to normal, so to speak. The adrenaline that you're using is no longer charging. I mean, the chemicals that are, were in your system and they were charging, they were being released because of the activities that you're involved in, because of the high-octane activities you're involved in, they're no longer there. And if you're keeping working when they're no longer there, you're going to become frustrated you're going to be a frustrated guy so move in the flow move in the flow and accept that i should rest i should recuperate before i can launch back again otherwise if you don't do this you're going to suffer a lot in terms of the re-entry someone will say how about that example you gave us in the episode yesterday when you talked about spiritual re-entry someone is so exerted in the spiritual life maybe in the presence of god so so much and now they're back to reality should they take a vacation from spiritual exertion also well i will say this that in our minds we need to have that familiarity that semblance of going away shielding ourselves away from the normal exertion that we've conducted even in that spiritual pursuit some people normally do that spiritual pursuit and you cannot be able to sustain that spiritual pursuit 100 percent 24 hours seven days a week is going to be topsy-turvy up and down so you need to identify a moment where you know ah i need to take a break i've been fasting a lot i need to take a break i've been on this prayer, I mean, exertion on this special issue of prayer. Now, I think I need to take a break from it a bit and so on. But I'm not saying you're taking complete break from it. There is this non-negotiables you normally do on a daily basis that you maintain. They maintain. They keep going. But I'm talking about the exertion. The exertion, something special you do to be able to deliver a project, to be able to deliver a goal that you've set for yourself. That's what you do. You take a vacation, take a break from it, and do things slowly. Pick up slowly, rest slowly, and recover slowly until such a time that you can be able to exert yourself once again. It is something prudent that we were commanded, and I said this in an episode prior, we were commanded to work. We were also commanded to rest. The authority we were given to work is the same authority we were given to rest. The potency of working, it is so potent as much as it is in relation to resting. Resting and working, their potency, their authority, their importance, it is actually the same. And that's what I'm talking about here. We need to learn to do this on and off, on and off, on and off, so we can be able to gather enough productivity, charge, recharge once again before we can go out. Otherwise, if you don't manage your re-entry well by taking some time off to vacation and so on and so forth, chances are that you're going to drain yourself so much Chances are that you're going to start working on empty. And if you're working on empty and if you're working on fumes, you get into that mode where you're distressed and you're stressed 
and your body is stretched, your mind is stretched, your emotions are stretched, your spirit is stretched, you're no longer the active, creative, fun, filled person that people normally used to know only because you've not been able to manage that re-entry well. So let us learn to manage the re-entry by taking, quote-unquote, a vacation. Tomorrow we're going to discuss something else close to this. Stay tuned and bye-bye. A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.